I was surfing the internet one day and came across this picture and thought, oh yeah, that's a pretty sick picture. But then I thought, wait, they use tigers in war? Which inspired me to make this video, giving you the rundown of the strangest animals used in war. And with the intro done, let's get started. Tripwires, claymores, C4s, all things of the past. You know, if you don't want to be a noob, then you gotta play the meta. You gotta use bees. So during the Vietnam War in the 60s and 70s, Viet Cong guerrillas would use beehives like makeshift C4s. They would essentially take the hives of the Asian giant honeybee and then relocate them onto the paths of the enemy. Then someone would camp in the bushes and wait until the enemy came along the path. Until... They would set off a firework right next to the beehive to aggravate the bees. And then the bees would swarm the enemy soldiers. Like those chickens from Zelda. You know, like if you hit a chicken, he'll summon two dozen of his friends and they'll just attack you. Yeah, so imagine that, but like, in real life. And instead of chickens, they're bees. And you gotta know, bees ain't no schlack either. The specific bee they used to attack can grow up to 20 millimeters long and top out at speeds of around 20 miles an hour. To put that into reference, Usain Bolt has topped out at 28 miles an hour. Now, instead of Usain Bolt, it's some random 18 year old who's been drafted to war. They're tired from hiking all day, and on top of that, they gotta carry equipment and guns. They ain't gonna be outspeeding these bees. Oh yeah, and did I mention that each colony can have a population of around 100,000 bees? Forget my analogy about the chickens. Think of like, I, I don't know, I can't even think of an analogy. Let's go ahead and imagine 100,000 angry bees swarming at you. That's GG. I can't believe this is gonna be your last day deployed. Yeah, man. I finally get to go back home to my wife and kids. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. Plus, this fight is super easy. They haven't even been able to move from the top of that mountain. <laughs> Wojtek was a Syrian brown cub bought by Polish soldiers during World War II. Growing up to 880 pounds and over 6 feet tall, with a diet of condensed milk and beer, he was massive. Wojtek was treated like a real soldier too, and was even given his own paybook, rank, serial number, and eventually, he even rose to the rank of corporal. However, due to evolution, bears weren't actually given opposable thumbs. Instead, they spiked all their evolution points into being an absolute tank. So, Wojtek was used to mainly transport supplies rather than shoot guns. Remember the whole no thumbs thing? However, in my own Wojtek fanfiction, I like to think that soldiers would ride on the back of Wojtek with guns in their hands and a sword in his mouth. You know, if the ancient Romans ever made a tier list of things they hated most, I could bet that it would comprise of Hannibal, a uh, bad wine, and, and bugs. They probably really hated bugs. During 198 BC, when they besieged the Atrenians at the city of Hatra, the ancient Romans got absolutely smacked by none other than scorpions. The Atrenians would fill pots full of scorpions and then drop them on top of Roman soldiers. In quote, the insects fell into the Romans' eyes and on all of the unprotected parts of their bodies. But don't feel bad for these absolute idiots. <laughs> Alright ancient Romans, this is to you. So, you're going into war against people with spears, arrows, and swords. So, so just hear me out. Wouldn't it be smart to wear good armor? Or you know, at least wear pants? Like what are you doing wearing skirts on a battlefield? Owie, ouch. I have scorpions piercing my body because I have chose to wear a skirt to war. Oh, and guess what? The Romans had to forfeit their attack because they decided that being stylish was much more important than wearing pants. And last one, remember that quote earlier? The insects fell into the Romans' eyes. Well, scorpions are actually arthropods, not insects. Alright then, honorable mention time. To all of the animals that kind of worked, I guess. Anyways, to start off, we're gonna give it to the Bat Bomb. So, a friend of the First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, made a plan to drop a bomb filled with 1,000 live bats over a Japanese city, where they would fly to the Japanese wooden homes with bombs attached to them, so that they could light fire to the homes. Which, in theory, kind of sounds interesting, but when you really think about it, it makes very little logical sense. And honestly sounds like something a 5 year old spitting out nonsense would say. Just really think about it, really. There is so many obstacles in this project. Like, first, where are you going to get the thousand bats? And second, how are you going to train all thousand to do exactly what you want? There's just too many flaws with this plan for it to work. And what would you know, after 6,000 bats and 19 million dollars, most of the bats just flew off or dove straight into the ground. 
Oh, but don't worry, that $19 million was used really well. They managed to set fire to a simulated Japanese village, a US army hangar, and a general's car. Yay. Unsurprisingly, this program was abandoned and they decided to go with the atomic bomb method. 10 times more evil, but 100 times more effective. Alright, we're running out of time, so we're gonna speedrun this last honorable mention. And I gotta give it to the dolphins and sea lions. Great animals, everyone likes them. They're like the Lapras of the real world. Basically, they had cameras on them, allowing them to locate enemy divers, submarines, ships, etc. You know what it is. They would come back and then report it back to the peoples and stuff. That's about it. They're cool. Dolphins are rad. Sea lions go arf. You know, that's it. And with that, that's almost all of the obscure animals that were used in warfare. I mean, obviously there are other ones. However, I just want to highlight the coolest ones. Well, that's it for the video. If you guys did find the video interesting or you enjoyed it, then it would mean a lot if you dropped a like. But that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.